Hello, welcome. Thank you for joining me for another installment, video installment. I'm Sean from Urban Tactical Survival. Today I wanted to discuss and show you guys something I've seen been discussed and uh, reviewed on YouTube and Facebook is the EDC bag and your 72 hour bug out bag. There are many people online who are reviewing bags such as this one and they're putting into their description the ultimate bug out or the ultimate EDC bag, uh, 72 hour bag. There's no such thing as the ultimate bag. And this is why I tell you, these are personal preference systems. What would work for me and the items that I choose may not be what would work for someone else. They may have a different opinion on the bags, type of sleep, sleep systems, type of equipment that you put into these bags. So it is a personal preference thing. These people that tell you that it's the ultimate bug out bag or the ultimate EDC bag, they want you to believe that what they have shown you is the ultimate equipment. It is the equipment that you should have in your bag, in your system. And that's false. I don't believe that. Camping, hiking, and doing anything in the woods is a personal preference. The types of equipment that you do go out and choose and, and you train with. It is a personal preference thing. So without further ado, I would like to show you my version of a 72 hour bag. Show you things that I pack in here that makes me comfortable and gives me the comfort of knowing that I will survive a 72 hour SHFT scenario if one would to uh, uh, show its ugly head or in a hiking or camping situation. So I have chosen the McCore 45 as my go-to bag. I chose this bag because it is a very large bag. It is a 40 liter bag. It holds just enough stuff, the right stuff for me, the stuff that I feel is comfortable for me to get through any situation. This is a very, very strong bag. Vanquish has put out uh, a number of new bags this year in SHOT Show that they have showcased it, and this is one of them. And I fell in love with it when I seen it. So I had to have it. So I'm gonna show you some of the features. I can't go over every, every feature and every nick and corner of this bag because I'd be here for an hour or two hours going over it and, and, and the functionality of the, everything that, that it has to offer. But I will show you the contents and how I set it up for my hike, uh, overnight hike or, or a camping situation or you know if it choose if it happens an edc uh a uh, 72 hour bug out scenario so the mccoy 45 is made up of on the bottom a thousand and five hundred denier nylon they put the thousand on the bottom because that is where it's most stress point the most you it, it would take a lot of the blunt of the stress and, and carrying the bag, you set it up and you set it down on the bottom. So there's your thousand, and everywhere else on the bag is 500 denier nylon, which is very strong. Vanquist has also managed to merge two different worlds together, the tactical and the camping worlds into one backpack, and this is it. They've given this backpack some of the tactical and technical aspects of a bag, and also the camping. So I'm going to show you, swing you around and show you the camping portion first. The camping that you find in a lot of high-end camping bags uh, is the shoulder straps, the harness system. This is a very thick, very strong harness system. Very thick padding down here on the sides which raises the backpack off your back so allow air flow through the middle of the backpack. It also allows you to by way of Velcro to unlash this and you can move this shoulder strap up to accommodate your size and your torso. The lumbar support is very strong and very thick. The uh, waist belt is very, uh, very firm and very thick. The straps on the belt 
uh, designed once you lash them together to pull forward to cinch it down onto your waist as opposed to some bags that have the pull backwards uh, feature on the bag. So I like the pull forward on these bags. The buckles are very high quality material. Uh, these are, you lashing them together, you can tell that they are not going to come apart in any scenario. Uh, once you lash them on, they are lashed and hooked on together. So the sternum strap here has the bungee elastic, which I like. So once you put this on, it does give a little give to it. It doesn't, it's not constraining you when walking. They've also added uh, a nice little feature right here, ready at your ready available, a little survival whistle right here on the buckles. This uh, lumbar support, not the lumbar, but the uh, sternum strap can be adjusted up and down for your, for your chest height. The uh, shoulder straps can be cinched down. Uh, you can cinch the bag down on your shoulders to bring the bag forward on your shoulders if you'd like. Instead of the bag riding away from your shoulders, you can cinch it down and bring it closer to you. Let me spin this around and show you the other side. And I'm not going to go into all the aspects of the bag, the functionality of the bag, because that's not what this video is about. I'm going to show you the contents of what I would put in a 72-hour bag or an overnight bag and a hiking trip or camping trip. And some of the items that I've chosen, these things may not work for you. That's why I have always advocate that this is a personal preference thing. You choose personal items that are comfortable for you. And it may not work for someone else. So, as far as an axe is concerned, I have chosen the uh, Schrade SCH. No, not SCH, but it is the Schrade SEAXE2. This is a very, very good axe to have out in the field. It has a pommel on the hammer, pommel on the back end, very uh, sharp blade. Uh, has a uh, ferrocium rod in the handle, so helps you in uh, getting a fire started if that's what you need. I've asked, added a uh, paracord to the handle to give me a better grip on it. Not that the grip itself on the handle was bad, but I just modified it for my personal preference. See, there you go, it's a personal preference thing. What works for me may not work for someone else. And the sheath, not of a very high quality, but it does what it's supposed to do. It protects the blade. Once you put it inside, snap it together there, and it's not coming off, and it is protecting the blade. So some may not like that particular blade or may not even like this particular ax. The old timers, they like the wooden handle and the uh, big ax head. So personal preference again. So that's my ax. Here in the front flap, which is their beaver dam. Uh, this is a reversible unit. It can be flipped over to reveal the uh, laser cut molly system right here that you can lash on with Velcro. It has a nice, very large Velcro uh, patch right there. You can put things on if it has Velcro. Two straps here that I have mounted my bivy tent and a uh, tarp to. So unlash those and tent I've chosen is the Snug Pack Ionosphere. That's my go-to tent for solo hikes and an eight by 10 camouflage tarp. I do like to put down a ground tarp when, uh, when I set up my tent. It helps uh, prolong and lengthen the life span of the bathtub on your tent. So I put the ground tarp down, put that on top of it, and I'm good to go. This is an eight by 10, which has very little weight to it, maybe about six, seven, eight ounces to it. It's very lightweight. So there you go. Down here in this bottom pocket here is my sleeping bag pocket. Here I also have the Snug Pack Jungle Bag, which is uh, a three season bag, spring, summer, and fall. Uh, cinches down to the size of a football. It's very compact, very lightweight, and it has kept me nice and snug and comfortable at night. So that's for that. 
Now, this particular bag is not waterproof. There is a big difference between water resistance and waterproof. Water resistance will resist water leakage for a very short period of time. And then after that, you will suffer leaks and the contents in your bag would get wet. So what I have incorporated with this bag, it didn't come with the bag. I've had one for a very long time from a previous backpack is a waterproof bag that you lay, that you put over the back, the backpack and it renders the backpack waterproof, thus protecting everything that you have on the inside. This is a very large bag, cinches down, stores in this nice little pouch here. It's a black bag, so that also helps camouflage me when I need to. So that's another thing that I keep there that I also add to this bag. That goes with me everywhere. Okay, so let me strap these up here so I don't lose them right here in the middle here is an as a molly webbing system that you can use these straps with you can place them anywhere they have number of uh, lashing points that you can put the straps on the lash on whatever it is that you may need to carry I particularly put this the tent on the inside and folded the beaver tail on the outside to protect it it also has G hooks here one for the top here that lashes onto the top and you got G hooks on the bottom. This is set up so that this flap is reversible. You can flip it over and your Molly uh, laser cut webbing would be on the outside where the bungee cord I have set up would be. So also a very large Velcro patch here for morale patches. I've chosen my personal favorites there uh, on the sides here. A water bottle you got to have water whenever you go I got a nice little Nalgene water bottle and on the side here I've on a laser cut molly system here on the sides I've incorporated a uh, tent stake uh, hammer uh, the tent stakes that come with my snug pack are made of uh, aluminum very strong aluminum but they tend they have I notice are very sharp on the edges and trying to get them pushed down in the ground becomes a problem and you can get cut with them so I have went out and bought me a hammer so I can hammer those down into the ground and have no problem in that area so on both sides you have water pockets very generous deep water pockets the molly system laser cut molly system is same on both sides you have them on both sides let's open this up to reveal the inside contents you have two pockets up here on the top and what I have in those is a headlamp when I need hands-free uh, when I'm doing hands-free work I need to keep my hands free I need but I still need a light I have a uh, headlamp also have two pins that I keep for writing down certain things if I need uh, some q-tips and some uh, uh, angel soft uh, wet wipes there and that's up in one of these pockets up here uh, also in the other pocket I have all of my uh, um, camera gear uh, cords things of that nature I do have uh, another little container with matches waterproof matches as far as uh, medical is, uh, medical is, is concerned I have a cat tourniquet that I keep with me at all times a 40% uh, mosquito repellent DEET and also you know some degree for your underarm you do want to smell good in, uh, in the field when you're out there. This other large pocket here also has a pass-through pocket that you can enter the backpack without even opening up the backpack. It uh, goes right through there. You put your hand in here and you enter the inside of the backpack without even opening it. If there's something in there that you want and didn't want to open it all the way up. So... Let's uh, lay this down and I'll get to opening up, show you what's on the inside. YKK zippers are the best in the market. On all, all the zipper systems are the YKK zippers. They are the best in the market. On the inside, I have my snug pack water poncho, patrol poncho. If it gets wet or rain comes down. Here I have my 
Ecotech Outdoors uh, sleep mat. This is a very compact, very uh, firm, uh, lightweight, compact, and uh, sleeping mat. Uh, my fire kit. Also keep everything I need in here to start a fire. I believe in redundancies. So inside here I have all types of uh, uh, equipment used to utilize in getting a fire started. Ferrocium rod, waterproof matches, uh, lighter. Uh, and I know you've seen fire kits, so they're pretty much standard uh, as to what's in those, you know. Uh, food, so I sometimes carry the uh, Mountain House uh, dehydrated uh, food packages. This one's a Mexican style chicken and rice, which is very good. I also keep my own seasonings that I would uh, add a little seasoning to it. So that's something I would add in there. Uh, my uh, Pathfinder water bottle kit. This also has the uh, uh, the uh, alcohol stove that I would use on the uh, stove that I cook with. It also has a large uh, 16 ounce, uh, 32 ounce, not 16, 32 ounce water bottle on set for extra water. I always keep a lot of water with me. Uh, my Stanley Cup cook system. I carry this with me everywhere. I got my two coffee cups in here. If someone else may, may like to tag along with me, I have two cups in here for coffee. Uh, that goes along. Also have a very small skillet for frying up uh, eggs or whatever you might want to cook. Whip up real quickly. Have a very small skillet, very lightweight. Okay, and on the flip side of carrying this axe, I do keep a large blade. Now, some would ask, why you keep the large blade if you got an axe? Well, I could sub if I didn't want to carry the axe. This blade here, the Schrade SCHF 28, would do the job. In your hand, this blade screams chop. It is a very strong, very robust blade. I've had this blade for over two years now, and it has done me. And I have been able to cut and chop down the same types of wood and tree limbs that I have with an ax. And this bites right down into it. It's very compact. It has a chole here, so you can get down to it and do finer detail work in the campsite. Um, it's very, very, uh, has a uh, Teflon coating on it to protect it from rust. Um, uh, forgot the steel, the name of the steel that this this is they make this with, uh, but it's a very strong, very strong steel, and uh, that comes in a nice hard plastic uh, glass filled uh, sheath. I've also added some paracord to that, modified that, and a strap here with a survival whistle on it as well. So. That goes along with the axe. And uh, further in the bag here, here I have all my water supplies, everything, the water purification uh, system, water pur purification tablets. I also have the emergency little water pouches in here. I've also stored my coffee. So when I'm out in the field, I like to get up in the morning, have early morning coffee. So that's out, that's what's in there. Also take with me a shovel a uh, shovel that's, uh, this is a very strong, very compact, lightweight shovel. This screw nut here allows you to open it up, screw it back down. Like so. Got this from Walmart, paid maybe uh, 15, 16 dollars for it. Very lightweight and very strong. I've used this many times out in the field and digging holes, cat holes. A lot of people don't talk about uh, using the bathroom, but when you get out there, you got to dig yourself a hole. Folds back, and you just tighten down the screw knot here, and locks everything together, keeps it from opening up on you. So I do carry a shovel with me in the case I need to dig a hole. Another item keep with me is my Baco Laplander, a saw, a nice little compact saw for those uh, cutting down small limbs. Okay, very good saw, very compact and light. And strapped on here on the inside and in the molly webbing on the inside of the backpack is my first aid kit. 
So that stays cinched on and lashed on right there. On the inside of this pocket, if I do not choose to carry a water bladder, which that's what this pocket is for, it's a very deep carries, you are able to put in a three liter water bottle, water bladder, excuse me, water bladder, get tongue tied here sometimes, a three liter water bladder on the inside here. But sometimes I use it, I got enough water here, so in there I slip my little stove, my uh, uh, Luxada wood stove, very lightweight. This is a very good stove. I've done a reviews on this stove in the past. And down, I also keep some cordage in case I need to lash down something or, you know, hang something in the field. So that goes down in there. On the inside of these pockets here, I keep a map of the area that I may be in. These are very nice, generous pockets here. Keep a couple of maps sewing kit, a compass, and a, uh, and a knife sharpener on the inside of this bag here. Also, a roll of duct tape, because you never know when you need some duct tape. So, maps go right in here. And my compass. The second pouch here I keep uh, is a my MSR water uh, filter. Uh, you can drink right from it. You can pump, stick this right in the river or stream that you happen to be close to and pump water in and it filters the water immediately and you're able to drink right from it immediately. So that I put in there. I have uh, toilet paper and some extra napkins. I also have another redundancy, a squeeze, a soya squeeze bottle. I also have the soya uh, water filter. Here are some more toilet paper and some napkins for uh, cleanup. So that goes right in there. And I store this in here. Zip those down. Okay. Uh, on the inside of this bag, you have, as you can see, a Molly webbing system that you can lash on by way of Molly systems and uh, or a Velcro. On the sides, on the inside, it has a Velcro, large, very large, long, elongated uh, Velcro patch that anything you had Velcro on, you just slap it on and it stays secure on the inside. I like the high vis orange on the inside of the backpack. It gives you, uh, allows you to see things very quickly so you can see where things are even at night. Um, this very large pocket right here is the uh, life support system to the backpack. It's the uh, stiff panel, the in internal panel to the backpack. I don't know why anybody would want to remove it because the rigidness of the backpack would be uh, blown away. But let's see if I can get that out and show you what that looks like. There, it's a nice black panel, very rigid. I'm not sure what they made this out of, but it is very strong and rigid. And that gives its support. Get that back up in there. And that seal that pocket with some Velcro. You also have a pass-through hole here for your water bladder. Comes right out of here from on the inside here. And then you can lash it onto one of the straps. It has uh, st straps, little uh, water uh, line keepers right here for your water bladder line. We'll get on there and run it down your shoulder straps. So that's everything that I would carry inside the bag. Uh, as far as uh, what I'm carrying when I go on a day hike or overnight trip, also on my person, at all times, I will keep another knife. This one is the uh, uh, Mora Bush Black Survival Blade. It has a very great uh, sheath that goes with it with a ferrocene rod also on it. And my choice of a firearm for personal protection would be the Glock 40. I keep that with an extra spare magazine in my pocket here. Spare magazine for those times when you got to uh, lay down the fire and move quickly. This is designed, I carry this everywhere 
it's a part of my clothing. Uh, in a SHFT scenario, you need some type of weapon to uh, help you maneuver through the systems in, uh, in the streets. Because in those uh, scenarios, the streets in the inner city would just, uh, people would just take over and it'd be chaos. So along with my pens, I keep a nice little pad that I write things down. I may see something or, you know, get somebody's name or number or something in the field of wherever I am or see something I need to write down, leave a message for someone, keep a nice little notepad. I also keep a pair of gloves, okay? These are uh, hard knuckle type gloves. So if I did have to put these on for a self-defense situation or a break through some glass or something, these hard knuckles, hard knuckle gloves will protect my knuckles in that scenario. Um, there are some things here that I have not picked up yet, like a Silcock key. That is something I would add to this uh, bag here. Uh, you would need a Silcock key. So in, you know, making your way out in a uh, SHFT scenario and you got a bug out, you would never have to worry about water because uh, you, you may come a string come across a stream or somewhere and you really don't trust it. So uh, buildings throughout the city would have a water sprinkling system and on the outside of the buildings would have a, uh, a nozzle that you can get water to. So with a Silcock key, you have access to fresh water at all times. Just uh, get to it and uh, use the key. Also, I, what I would put in here, I haven't uh, brought it out today, is um, I know some people use lock picks but I would uh, use a bowl cutter, uh, the same locks that they're picking. All right, I wouldn't take the time to pick it. I just take the bowl cutters and snap it, snap the chains or snap the lock itself. And there I have gained access to that facility or that building or wherever uh, if I need to get in there and hide. So those, these are items that I feel. And also on the outside, I have uh, several carabiners for uh, lashing on th things if I need to. Uh, I got a nice little hook here. It's the uh, Hero Clip, which is a very, very nice clip. It's a carabiner style that I use when I'm uh, camping somewhere. I like to keep my bag up off the ground, so I can either use rope, uh, some cord to do that, or I use my uh, Hero Clip. And I put my bag on and hang it up and it keeps it off the ground. So this is a very, very nice little gadget here that uh, I keep with me lashed to my backpack along with the uh, other carabiners here. So, so there you have it. Here's just a brief rundown uh, of what I would keep uh, in my backpack. Also keep a uh, waterproof bag here for the map of the area I might be traveling in. Okay, state parks, I use this. Put them in a waterproof uh, seal bag here, so if it happens to be raining, it wouldn't get my map wet. So I keep that there. And it also has Velcro that I can attach it on the inside if I choose to, right here. And uh, it would stay secure to the inside of the backpack by, Vel by way of Velcro. Okay, what else do I have in here? Also have a small pouch for some hygiene. Hygiene items like toothpaste, toothbrushes, uh, some little wet nipes, to, uh, some uh, toothpicks, uh, some uh, lens cleaners, uh, a razor, you know, may want to shave in the, in the field. Nice little compact unit there that I keep. Also, redundancies is, is a key. My lucky number is two. So at any point, any one time, you might, I might have two of everything. Try. I try not to because of weight, but the majority of the time I got two of everything. So as far as lights is concerned, I did show you my headlamp, but I also keep two uh, tech lights. These are, uh, one has got the Black Scout Survival logo on this, a WildTac A1S V2s. Uh, one has a very serious uh, self-defense bezel on it. It also screws off where I could use a red lens for lasers on rifles, it would not the it wouldn't interrupt with the laser, the red light. So these are two high-powered 1500 lumens on the lights. Very high-powered lights, 1500 lumens. So I keep two, one on the bag and one on me at all times. So this is the quick lowdown.
I want to show you guys and uh, let you know that I firmly do not believe in the ultimate bug out bag or the ultimate EDC bag. It, it's just, that's not true and it, it, there is no such thing. So also one thing I do want to mention that I do have the wood stove, the uh, Luxata wood stove here. It comes in a nice little compact. This is a very great stove that uh, I've uh, been using. I've also managed to upgrade this stove uh, with a grill top, okay? This I have modified it, can't get it out of here, <laughs> too tight. I have modified the stove, it does not come with a grill top, but I have modified it and, uh, and put on and added grill top. So you put that on top of your stove. So you, any meat that you might have, a piece of steak or chicken, and uh, you can put this on top and you can grill right on the stove. Uh, that's a very, very good upgrade, I think, to the system here, the cook, uh, the uh, stove. Uh, this stove will take a alcohol burner, and I use the one from the Pathfinder bottle, and the fuel that I do use from the path for the off uh, the uh, burner is readily available everywhere at your local uh, Lowe's or Walmart stores. It's the uh, heat. You pick this up anywhere. This burns very clean. Uh, very good fuel to use if you needed it. And I use this when I'm out with an alcohol stove. Heat. You find that anywhere. So, these are the items that I personally feel is, is com I'm comfortable with in any scenario that I go when I'm out hiking or camping. These are some of the items, not all of them all the time, because there are certain situations that require a lighter bag. I like to carry a lot of food, enough food. Here I use the mountain houses sometimes, or I prep my food at night for the next day's trip. So. Just want to give you a quick lowdown of what I carry and to reiterate uh, that there is no such thing as the ultimate bug out bag or the ultimate EDC bag. These things are personal preference things. A lot of these things on here, or maybe all of them, are things that some people would not want to use because they don't feel comfortable with them. So that's what they choose and that's okay. So. Uh, so that's it for the video today. Uh, remember, now is the time to prepare. And remember to always check your sex. I'm Sean from Urban Tactical Survival. Until the next time I come to you with another video installment, please enjoy. Please hit like and subscribe down there and, and share this video with your friends and family. Uh, if you have any comments on any of the items that I've showed you here, please leave your comments. I'll get to them and we'll discuss them at a later date or video that you might want to do. Uh, want me to do so please leave your comments hit like and share and subscribe down there and I'll get back to you enjoy the woods and have a good afternoon